Hi, everybody. Welcome. I am happy that you're here. My name is Alicia Renice, and we are live. We are live. Um, we are going to be making music tonight, but first, I wanted to talk about fear and perfectionism because this is something that's been coming up in my own life um, and in the lives of others that I've been talking to recently. So if you're here, let me know. Let me know you can hear me. Let me know if I'm too loud. I didn't really test the mic before I went live. So, so hopefully you can hear me. Um, but yeah, so we're going to make some music. But first, I, again, I want to talk about perfectionism and um, fear. And if you're rewatching, welcome. You can participate like you're here. Um, but yes, so I've been talking to a lot of creatives lately. And whether that's online or in person. And yeah, I'm just waiting for y'all to let me know you can hear me. <laughs> But um, yeah, I've been talking to a lot of creators online and in person. And one of the things that keeps coming up is this conversation around like waiting, waiting for the perfect conditions, waiting to be good enough, waiting to be, um, waiting for our thing to be good enough to share in the world. And, you know, I've been sharing some videos recently in the comments that I've been getting have been like, oh, I wish I was, I wish I was this creative. Like, I wish I was, um, I wish if, if I was fearless, I would do this thing. Like if I had, you know, I don't know. Okay, good, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, baby. <laughs> so yeah, so people have been saying, you know, if I was brave, I would do X, Y, Z. If I was brave, I would do X, Y, and Z. If I was fearless, I would do these things. And I, I guess people see me creating and they think that somehow I'm like this fearless person who is just like in here and I'm like, yes, like I'm doing the thing, I'm brave, I'm wonderful. But really, I'm scared, I'm scared. Um, I have always been a very fearful person since since I was a child. I was very shy, um, very introverted. I would literally like wrap around, wrap myself around my mom's leg. I didn't want nobody to talk to me. I didn't want, want nobody to see me. I was a very fearful child. And that really didn't change. That didn't really change um, as I grew older. But I think people think that because of what I share and because I'm showing up and I'm live and I'm making music and I'm making content or videos, I'm putting out books and all these other things that I am fearless and I am not. I just want you to know that I am not fearless at all as I'm speaking. I am shaking, um, you know, and, and, and we'll get to that in a second. But like the fear, the fear that we feel, and I keep saying this as well, wishing. And I got that. I can't remember who I got it from, but fear literally wants to um, protect you. Fear wants to keep you safe. Fear wants to keep you from dying. Um, fear wants to keep you you know, from embarrassing yourself, from, I, th I think death, death is the literal thing that fear is trying to keep you from, death of relationships, of your, I don't know, of your uh, prestige and your, you know, I don't know, of your friends, like your relationships. They're like, ah, oh, don't do this thing because if you do it, you know, you're gonna lose your friends. If you do it, they're gonna make fun of you. If you do it, you're gonna look stupid, you're gonna fail. Um, and so, yeah, so fear is literally trying to stop you. Yeah, sounds like the ego, yes, absolutely. And the ego tries to keep us safe. Like it has, it has a, it has a role, right? Like fear has a role in our lives. But when we give that fear too much uh, power, then we're kind of paralyzed. Good evening. Yeah, then we're kind of paralyzed. Um, and so, yeah. So, like I said, since since I was a child, I was a fearful child. Um, I'm afraid of the dark. I'm still afraid of the dark. I'm just be honest. I don't like the dark. Um, I don't like being alone. Um, I don't like failing. I don't like looking stupid. I don't like disappointing people. I don't like hurting people's feelings. Um, these are all fears that I have and I think that they're all valid. And so to you, I wanna say, if you're fearful, they're valid. Your fears are valid, right? Nobody wants to hurt other people, you know, hopefully. <laughs> Nobody wants to, you know, embarrass themselves. No one wants to fail. Failing is not fun. And I put fail in um, quotation marks because we'll get to that in a second. Failing isn't fun, right? And so being embarrassed is not fun. And so your fear is valid. Your fear wants to keep you from hurting yourself. And, you know, like I said, like from touching hot things to being afraid to do public speaking, like the fear is trying to keep you safe. Um, so, yeah, so there's nothing necessarily wrong with being fearful. Um, and in, in order to be brave, I think a lot of people think that to be brave means to be fearless. I don't think that there is a such thing as fearless. And people who are fearless, I think they need help. Like people who are fearless literally need help. Um, because when you when you need fear to live, you need fear to survive. Like I'm afraid of crossing 95 because I don't want to get hit by a car. But if I had no fear, I'd just be out here doing anything, right? I'd be reckless. I, I'd be reckless with myself, with others, with my things. Um, I wouldn't hold anything sacred and de or dear to to me. And so, um, yeah. So I mean, you hear me stuttering, right? Like I'm stuttering because I'm nervous. And I have notes on the side to try to keep me on track. But um, but hi everybody, welcome, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here. 
Um, so yeah, so yeah, bravery is not the absence of fear. It's doing something in spite of fear. It's doing something in spite of being afraid. It's just going for it anyway. And the only way that you can become more courageous or more brave is by doing the thing. And so it's like this, you know, it's like this catch 22. It's like, well, you know, I'm afraid of doing the thing, but then if I do the thing, then that's gonna be scary. But the only way that you can work through fear is literally working through fear. You know what I'm saying? Um, hi, everybody. Dr. Ranger says, courage is all about feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yay, I'm glad you understand me. And hello, Vincent, hello, everyone. Um, yes, welcome, okay. Um, brave is courage in the face of fear. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the only way that you can be courageous. So the comments I've been seeing, like, um, I wish I was as I wish I was brave enough to sing live. I wish I was brave enough to talk about these things. I wish I was brave enough to speak on these things. And what I will say is, I'm scared too. <laughs> I'm scared too. When I when I share my heart, that's a very vulnerable position to be in to share your thoughts and your opinions with the world. When the world can be very cruel. It's a very vulnerable place to be in. And a lot of people are afraid of being vulnerable. A lot of people are afraid of being um, bad at something first, right? And I know that for myself, and we'll get to that in a second, I'm getting ahead of myself, but either way, we'll just, we'll just go. Um, perfectionism, I really wanna talk about perfectionism because I think that, I used to consider myself a perfectionist. I used to say that I am a perfectionist. Like I want to make good things. And I, I don't think that's not the case. I, I do think I wanna make good things, but I think more than perfection I was looking for, it was, uh, it's fear. Like perfectionism is fear. Like perfectionism is the fear of showing up for something unprepared or, you know, misspeaking or there being a flaw in something. And so the thing is, if we're waiting for something to be perfect or for ourselves to be per perfect, we'll never do anything. We will never do anything. Um, and there is a scripture and I always reference this, but I cannot remember where it's from, but it basically says, um, like the farmer who looks at the sky and waits for perfect conditions, never plants. And it's, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a proverb, <laughs> but um, yeah, the, the farmer who waits for, for perfect conditions never plants anything. And it's so true. And they never reap anything, right? So they're spending all this time waiting for um, the perfect conditions, the perfect weather, the perfect soil, the perfect thing to plant. And so then it's a struggle because it's like you're struggling with fear, but then you're also struggling with regret of not doing. You're struggling with, oh, well, you know, all these years have passed me by and, you know, now it's too late to do the thing. And so now you're afraid of being too old or, you know, being a beginner at an older age or, you know, like it's, you, you get caught in this trap. Like fear is literally a trap. Like fear is well wishing, but fear it can also be a trap. And so I think that we have to start making um, the right judgments on whether fear is trying to keep us safe or keep us bound. You know what I'm saying? So good afternoon, Nora. Welcome. Um, Jasmine Nicole says, yes, I struggle with this. Me too. Me too. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not superwoman. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm not, you know, this, I'm, I'm not, I'm not this like special person who's doing something that you can't do. You can do it too. And it doesn't have to be on YouTube. It doesn't have to be music. It could be whatever your thing is, like whatever it is, you can be brave too. Um, and, and I feel like bravery is an exercise. Courage is an exercise. It's, it's, literally taking action to be brave, right? Like it's taking action to take the first step because what I realize why I'm nervous right now is because I've been out of practice. Like I have not been practicing. Um, practicing in public is something I'm trying to do to get over my fear of messing up, of failing, right? Like I'm, I'm trying to get over the fear of um, people judging me and all these other things. And like the only way to work through that fear is to do it, is to fail in public, is to fail publicly. There have been times y'all who have been here I've made loops and it just didn't turn out good. It didn't turn out good. Or, you know, the internet went down or um, somebody writes something weird and nasty in the, in the chat, right? Or, or um, I sing off key. And these are fears. These are like real fears that I have that have kept me from creating and singing and doing. And so what I realized is that when the fear, when the, when the fear is realized, it's not that bad. Like it, the worst thing that could happen has happened and I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so yeah. Um, one love, I'm sorry, one village, excuse me, Salon says, yes, Lord, perfectionist P Patty is my inner mean girl. Yes, yes. I, I told her, thank you for protecting me, but now I'm good. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, I don't want to diminish fear or um, uh, make it something smaller than what it really is. Fear is real. I don't want to invalidate. That's the word I was looking for. I don't want to invalidate your fear because the fear is real, but usually we fear the most extreme thing that could happen 
And it hardly ever happens. The most extreme thing that could happen hardly ever happens, you know? I'm Wingo 500, hi. I'm hard to find that balance. It really is, it is. Um, J, J Boob, hi. Will this live stay up? Yes, yes it will. Um, Powerful Majesty says, perfectionism is a word that the status quo uses to normalize the terror of making a mistake instead of healing the, the, that state of constant fear. Yes, excuse me. Sorry, I had a burp. <laughs> that and the title, type A personality. Absolutely. A lot of people, like including myself, like when I look back at myself, when I was a perfectionist, like when I was overdoing it, overworking, like that was coming from a place of trauma and fear. It wasn't coming from a place of like pride and, and, and I mean pride in a good way, not pride as in like, oh, my pride, I got to protect my pride. Like it wasn't coming from a place of joy and pride. It was coming from a place of, I can't let anybody see me fail. I can't be a failure, right? Like too much is riding on this. And I put all this pressure on myself and it was really killing my creativity, killing my dreams, killing myself. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely, I, I totally agree. A lot of people are type A personality, but really they're just, they're just fearful. Um, yes, is this, I can't see what that is. Is that a broccoli? I can't see, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Melanated Monroe. I wish I could see the, the emoji. Um, hey, beautiful people, please hit the like. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. But yes, um, so I had notes and I'm all off note, all, but that's fine. So currently I'm doing a, okay, I'll definitely look later, thank you. I'm um, currently, I'm doing a 31 day loop challenge, right? And so every day, oh, thank you so much. Hi, Barbara, welcome. Every day I'm trying to make a loop. And I was talking to my friend Marcus, he's here. And um, I was telling him that everything, I don't like everything I make, right? The loops that I've been making, even my husband heard me. Like, I was like, I don't like this loop I made today. It is trash, right? But the goal isn't to be good. The goal is to keep showing up. The goal is to try, right? And so me and Marcus were talking about how people see a curated feed, right? And so Marcus was taking pictures. Marcus, I hope you don't mind me sharing this, but this really resonated with me. Like he was saying that he was sharing photos that he took and people were like, oh, you know, this, this photo photography is great. And so he was like, thanks, but you didn't see like the, hundred of the hundreds of photos I took that I did not post, right? You didn't see the hundreds of photos I, I took, but I said, oh, that's not good enough and me filtering through and picking the ones that I wanted to do it. And a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of things we're judging ourselves on is a curated feed or a curated share from other people. And we're comparing that to what we see every day. Like we know the stuff we're creating, right? We, we know ourselves. And so we're, we're, we're um, okay, cool. <laughs> he said, no problem. Like we know the struggle of creating. We know the struggle of making, of doing, of trying, of applying, like whatever the thing is, even if you're not an artist, right? We know um, the messy parts that nobody sees. And we're judging our messy parts to somebody else's curated something, like curated feed or curated um, a, a list of accomplishments. They're not telling you all the times they failed, right? They just telling you they opened a business. They just telling you that they, that they did X, Y, and Z, right? And you're like, oh, dang, like, well, what am I doing? You didn't see all the work that it took for them to get there, all the failures, again, in air quotes, all the failures that they had to endure to get somewhere successful. And so it's not really fair or kind to ourselves to judge ourselves on someone else's curated feed, but we do it all the time. And especially in the age of social media, where everything is shareable, everything is like Instagrammable, everything is about curating everything, including our lives. Like we see people's homes and they're immaculate. And like, we don't see that, you know, six days out of seven when they're not posting content, it's a mess. It's a mess, like everybody else's house. But somehow we're like, dang, like these people have it together, but I don't. I'm gonna let you on a little secret. Nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. We're all faking it. We're all figuring it out every step that we take. No one really knows. We're all just trying things. It's all about an experiment. And some experiments work and some experiments don't. And we take that information and we apply it to the next thing. And I feel like that's how we have to start looking at the things that we try, the things that we create. Um, yeah, the things that we're doing in our own lives. So, hi, Liberation Speaks, welcome. Fall down seven, get up eight. Absolutely, absolutely. So when I was doing like the, the, the loops, I literally said to my husband, I was like, I don't think I'm talented anymore. I think I suck, my voice sucks. I'm not creative anymore. This, this is all trash, you know? And, um, and it was really discouraging for me. It was really discouraging for me. And so again, like I said, when I'm making loops in, in public, when I'm sharing stuff, I'm sharing stuff like to, to help other people, obviously, yes, but also for myself. The only way that I cannot be afraid is by doing, you know what I'm saying? And so for an example, like of perfection, like 
one, perfection doesn't exist. Let's just throw that away. Like perfection does not exist. It is a myth. There's nothing that is perfect. Even the things that we see with our naked eye that we think is perfect, there's some, you know, some missing parts. Some things are not symmetrical perfectly. Like there, everything has imperfection, but I think the imperfections make it beautiful. The imperfections make it real, make it human. And I think about artists that I enjoy. I'm one of them being Brandi Carlisle. She has a song um, called The Story. And in that song, her voice cracks. Like her voice literally um, goes away. <laughs> it goes away and comes back. And, you know, I imagine in the studio, the person who was like working the boards could have been like, do you want to retake this? You know, because your voice kind of went out um, out during that um, during that verse. I love that she kept that in there. I love that she kept that imperfection in there because it makes the song perfect. It makes it more emotional. It makes it uh, easier to connect with. Right. Like, I don't I don't know about you. I don't want to see perfect things all the time. I want to see human things and humans are not perfect. My ears are like one one ear is higher than the other or something like that. Like <laughs> I was just talking about this with my husband. Like one of my ears is not even, um, but I love my ears. I love my ears, right? Now that's a very weird thing to say. I don't know if people love their ears, but I love my ears. And I think that that makes it perfect. And even the people who um, are hailed as like the, the ones, like the people, like the Beatles, for example, right? The Beatles be off key. They be off beat. Um, they be... You know, they don't blend well, but somehow they have amassed this following. And again, I have thoughts on this because a lot of them, you know, they were taking black music and making it their own. That's a whole other conversation, but go with me here, right? Like the Beatles are very, uh, very famous. <laughs> They're a household name to this day, but they weren't worried about being perfect. You know what I'm saying? Like these white boys from the UK were not worried about being perfect. They were worried about like creating, showing up, doing things in their own, um, doing things in their own way, in their own, in their own taste. LB says, I love my shoulders, LOL, I'm serious. I'm glad you love your shoulders, you should. They're awesome, shoulders are important, okay? But yeah, so the Beatles, they are off key, they be doing anything, okay? And they're rich, like they're household names. I don't know if they're rich now, if Paul McCartney, anyway. But either way, they're, they were rich, they toured, they met all these famous people. They were hailed as like, you know, um, geniuses and they were not perfect. They were not perfect. And I think, I think there is something to that too. Like, especially like for my black folks here, I think that sometimes we feel like we have to be way more put together, way more polished to be taken seriously, right? Like people are out here doing the, the, the least, doing bare minimum, not even, doing the least, right? And then still getting ahead while we're stuck in our own, and our own insecurity and, and, you know, downplaying our greatness and the brilliance that God gave us because we're worried about what other people think. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm not knocking the Beatles. I like some of their music, but I, I just think it's very interesting that these people weren't worried about being perfect. They were worrying about being prolific, right? And that takes me to my, to my next point. Prolific is my word for the year or the phrase be prolific. And I think like the noun is prolificness. And so basically that just means that um, that just means that you are not worried about being perfect. You're worried about showing up and doing it. Like you're trying to create as much work as possible, right? So the idea, the idea that I'm taking is um, the, the 31 day loop challenge. I'm not worried about trying to find a good loop song. I'm worried about showing up and making a loop every day. And that takes the pressure off of me to be good. I don't have to be good, I just gotta show up. You know what I'm saying? Um, Calligraphy Art says, yep, they are still pr plenty rich. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Um, there is some truth to that. I do think I do think that we feel, Black people feel like we have to be extraordinary to even be at the, at their, at the majority's basic. So like our top is like their bottom in our minds, but we're brilliant. We're amazing. And a lot of them, the Beatles included, got their stuff from Black folks. <laughs> so I don't know. It's a, you know, it's a conversation. Um, oh, wow. Thank you so much. Recording my first YouTube video right now. Yes. As I type. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for the encouragement. I am so excited. And please share it when you do, when you do post it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, Dr. Ranger says, I'm so struggling to put myself out there, even though I know I can help so many people. Perfectionism and fear are killing me. I feel you. And, the, and your fears are valid. Your fears are valid. And so I think at some point you have to decide and this is what my husband said to me. And so you have to decide whether your fears 
are more important than your dreams? Are your fears, is your safety, is your um, security or false sense of security, right? Because even if you're fearful in that and not doing anything, you're still insecure, right? Like you're still fearful. Is your fear more important than your dream? And I think for me, what I realized is that if when I don't create, I feel bad. When I don't make, when I don't share, I, I feel down about myself. You know what I'm saying? And I've said this before. I think that, um, that your dreams don't die. Like they turn into a cancer. Like I've said this before, and I think I heard, it, heard that from somewhere. But like your dreams literally eat you alive. You know what I'm saying? They like, they don't die. Your dreams don't go anywhere. I don't think anybody's dreams ever die. They just gnaw at you. You know what I'm saying? And so then your, your dreams turn into bitterness and to judgment and jealousy and envy and um, self, self-deprecating. Like, and, it's, and I think it's really healthy that we chase our dreams. You know what I'm saying? So that makes sense. But I believe in you and you can do it. You can do hard things. It, it, it is hard at first. I'm not even gonna lie. Like, oh, just do it. It's fun. It's fine. Sometimes it's not fun. Sometimes it's not fine. Sometimes it does suck, but it is so worth it. I promise you. I promise you. Um, Dr. Ranger, we are told we have to be extraordinary and superhuman all the time. All the time. From the time we're children. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Sierra, hi. I love that you point that out. It is embedded. It is. Absolutely. It is. Sir Elton John, um, good example of doing what he likes in music. Absolutely. He doesn't ask permission to do anything. I think of, um, when he said Elton John, I think about Queen. Listen to their music. Queen's music is so diverse. It's so, I love, I love their music. I love Queen. Um, but their music, their catalog is so interesting because it includes everything that they ever want to do. And they're not worried about, you know, who's going to like it and who's not. I'm sure on some level, because they get paid to do that, they're worried about that or they were worried about that. But on some other level, it's like they were experimentalists, right? They, they were just like, we're just going to do it and see what sticks and see what happens. You know what I mean? And I feel like there's a lot to be said in that. Like a lot of us can do that. Just experiment and see what happens. Just see what happens. And we don't have to be like, I'm an expert. I'm X, Y, and Z. I never position myself to be an expert or um, the best at anything. I'm ever learning. I, you know, there's no ceiling to how much I can learn and improve. And it takes the pressure off of me. I don't have to be excellent. I can just be mediocre and that's fine. I think, you know, and a lot of, I think a lot of people want to run away from this word mediocre or mediocrity. And I kind of embrace it because in there is where I find peace, is where I find joy, right? Like I can play, I can be an amateur. That's another word a lot of people don't like using. I'm an amateur. And all an amateur means is that you do something for the love of it, for the love of something. You do something because you love doing it. And I wanna keep that attitude with me in everything I do because it takes the pressure off of me from having to be good or excellent or to be an expert. I don't ever wanna be that. I never wanna be that. Um, calligraphy art says so true. They and the Rolling Stones. Yes. So many others took and took from black creators. That's very true. So unfair. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, I use that example, um, loosely because I know that there are systems in place that keep black folks from, from thriving. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting to me. Um, Brianna Lee says, I feel like perfectionism in a way prevents me from being my authentic self because I've been conditioned to thrive off external validation. Me too. I see you. I see you. Um, yeah, I am a recovering people pleaser and I get, I get it from my mom. I'm gonna just be honest. I get it from my mom. And, um, I thought that my value came from my usefulness to other people or my, uh, my love from other people. And when I didn't have that, then I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I wasn't, you know, important. I wasn't seen and I'm still working through that. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm a work in progress. But I, I feel you like a lot of us are conditioned to seek external validation, but it makes sense because look at all the things that we're that we're put in. Look at school like you're literally seeking validation every single day. Give me an A, right? <laughs> Give me an A to say that I'm good enough. Like I want to have a good report card or perfect attendance. Um, I want to win the game. You know, I'm thinking about like extracurricular activities or, you know, the competition. Like we're always we're taught to always seek validation, to seek being enough, whatever enough looks like, you know? I'm, I'm trying to earn that paycheck. Got to get paid. You know what I'm saying? So everything does run off of validation. And so it makes sense. I, I don't think that there's, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with you for seeking external validation. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, on some level, I feel like we need external validation. I feel like everybody needs to be validated. Our, our existence, our worth, our value, all that does need to be um, validated in community. So, you know what I mean? But we don't want to let that to stop. We don't want to let that to stop. We don't want to let that stop us from 
I'm living our lives. You know what I'm saying? We don't want it to be bondage. I feel like everything is healthy, but some stuff that's done or sought, you know, or that we overseek gets in the way. I hope that makes sense. I'm um, thank y'all for showing up and supporting Alicia. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, LB says, yeah, I'm doing music I like. Awesome. I hope people listen for the message. Absolutely. I'm just going to say this, even for myself, I've changed my focus from trying to be good to just showing up and doing my part. I can't control if people like my stuff. I can't control if people show up. I can't control, you know, if it gets picked up in an algorithm on YouTube or on Spotify. I can't control any of that, okay? All I can control is me showing up. Like literally, and, and so I'm focusing, I'm taking, I think, I think a lot of us focus on things that we cannot control and so that, that is overwhelming because we can't control how people feel about us. We can't control if people like us or stay or if they appreciate us or approve of us. But we can approve of ourselves and show up for ourselves. And so I think for me, changing that focus to me just showing up and doing my part has helped immensely. Like it's taken the pressure off to be everything for everybody because everybody's not going to like me. Like I saw, I had a video I shared and it said, um, what did it say? It was talking about, it was talking about something. It was my birthday, <laughs> my birthday uh, concert that I shared. And there were so many people that didn't like the video. And I'm like, what is there not to like? It's just my birthday, right? Like, I'm not asking for your validation. <laughs> like, I'm just existing and I'm just saying, hey, it's my birthday. And people will find a reason to criticize you for everything. Somebody might not like my haircut. Somebody might not like the way I talk, the way I sing, the way I look. You know what I'm saying? Some people might not like, I don't know. I don't know. My thoughts on things, they could disagree with me, but that's not my, that's not my place to worry about that. Like it really isn't. And I'm saying this to y'all as I'm saying it to myself, because I get stuck in my head so much. What will people think? What are they going to say? Right? That's none of my business. That is none of my business. People are going to find a reason to criticize you, whether you do the thing or you don't. And the thing is, the only way that you can not be criticized is by not existing, right? They're going to criticize you if you try to do the thing that's scary. They're going to criticize you if you don't do the thing that's scary. They're going to call you a coward and say that, you know, you're not brave and, you know, all these silly names. Or they're going to, you know, you seeking the thing or doing the thing. It's going to be like, oh, who she thinks she is or who he think he is, right? Like, what, like, you, they're going to find a reason to criticize you for something. And a lot of that has to do with them. That's what I've been learning. A lot of that is projection and it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with you. The fact that I am a black woman walking around existing infuriates a lot of people. And that has nothing to do with me. That has nothing to do with me. I mind my business. And people will find a reason to hate you, to not like you. You know what I'm saying? So this is just, I'm, I'm learning the things. I'm learning the things. <laughs> um, average has become a curse word when most of us are. Literally, what is the definition of average? The definition of average is literally the, I was gonna, I was gonna say the average, is like, if, if you have all these numbers, right? What we, what we learned in math class, right? You have all these test scores, you add them up, you divide them by how many people took the test. That's the average. That means that most people got around or this number, right? So yes, most of us are average and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Like it doesn't have to be offensive. Um, and the people that are extraordinary, like they have their place too, but it doesn't diminish you. It doesn't make you any less. And, and I'm learning that too. That's a whole other video, but that's a whole other topic. But learning that other people's success does not mean my failure. It doesn't mean that I'm less than. There's enough room for all of us here to thrive, to be good enough. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I'm working through it too. Yes, me too. Marquita, hi. LB says it's not easy at all. It's not, it's not. Um, Sierra says, yes, me and my friend were talking about validation. Absolutely. I've seen this phrase that says validation is for parking. And you know, on some level, I agree. I like that. It's cute. I like that. Um, but we all need to be validated. We do. And I, I think even in our uh kin like in our friendships and things like that, like we are validated. Hopefully, if you have good friends, your existence is validated, your feelings are validated, your dreams are validated, right? Your pains are validated. We all need validation. It's okay. It's okay to want validation. We're human, you know? That's literally without validation, I feel like we would die. We would die. Um, Sierra says, since, we're, since we were born, we have needed it. Skin to skin contact. Absolutely. 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 For mom and baby. You know what I'm saying? So yes. Um, Brianna Lee says, perfectionism have, has even prevented me from resting. Yeah. I am tired, just not sure how to escape the rat race. Yes. I mean, same. Um, even this idea, I saw somebody talk about this on there, and I think that they meant well when they said this, but they were like, 
you know, I'm going to go ham because people are sleeping and when they're sleeping, I'm going to get ahead of them. And I'm like, Sir, like, and it was, a, it was a gentleman who was speaking. And I was like, I hate that thought process. I hate that. I hate that thought that if I rest, someone's going to get ahead of me, right? And it's like, no, like, we're not in competition. <laughs> There's enough room for everybody and rest is important and it's healthy. And so I totally understand that. I definitely hear you. Um, Innocence Ash, your channel is saving my life. Oh, thank you for this. Thank you. That means a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm glad this is helpful. I really am. I really am. Um, Powerful Majesty says, I think mediocre, mediocre um, just connotes, I'm sorry, just doing the bare minimum and not doing one's best. Being your unique self means having faith that God made you the way he intended you to be and you are perfectly imperfect. Absolutely. I mean, and, and again, like mediocre to me, like let's look up the definition because I could be saying the wrong definition, but I know for a fact, like average, I'm fine with mediocre definition, mediocre only moderate quality. Okay. Mediocre is not a word I mean then. <laughs> not very good. Okay. No. Mediocre is not a word that I mean then. Um, yeah. But yeah, average. Let's say average. I like that better. Thank you for that. Um, Marcus says projecting LL. Yes. A lot of people be projecting. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Um, I, me and my husband have an RV channel and this lady was telling me all types of ways how I was a horrible wife and you know, I'm, I don't know. What does she say? Like, I'm never satisfied. This woman has never met me a day in her life, right? But she's speaking to me like she knows me. And these people literally, like, you see what I allow you to see, right? Like, you see what I allow, what I allow you to be lit into, right? But you don't know me. But people literally project and tell you who you are. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. Oh, thank you for the heart. That's cute. Thank you. Um... Glow says, I wish I had more friends like you. I found myself having to spend more time alone because I just don't feel connected to my friends like I used to. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Yes, if you were with our friends, we'd accept you. <laughs> we'd accept you um, arms wide open. Um, but my, my prayer for you is that you do find a community that is healthy, helpful, and loving, and that you feel like you can be yourself with, you know, and that you feel connected to. So I'm sorry to hear that. But I'm hoping that, you know, new friends will come. Um... I feel so, I'm so happy I found your channel. I feel so seen, understood, and virtual hug. Yay, virtual hug. I'm glad, that makes me happy. And yeah, that makes me happy. <laughs> um, LOL, average equals normal. Exactly, congratulations, you're normal. Most of us are, most of us are. Um, but, I, but I do understand that here, especially in this culture, what is celebrated is extraordinary. What is celebrated is excellence. And I roll my eyes as I say that. What is celebrated is like, you know, um, the kids, what are the prodigies, like they're the people that are usually celebrated and it makes the rest of us, which is most of us feel like, dang, I suck. No, you don't. You're in good company. Most of us, most of us are here with you. You're not alone. You know, LB says, yes, this is so good for my healing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being here. Yay. Okay. Let me get back to my notes. Okay. So, <laughs> so the truth is again about perfectionism. We're afraid. We're afraid of criticism, judgment, failure, success. I know I'm afraid of success, a fear of being seen, right? But the thing is like, we have these, we have these generalized fears, but I think what we really fear is what the, um, is what the fear really means, right? So for example, if I'm criticized, like my fear is like, if I'm afraid of being criticized by other people, my fear isn't necessarily the criticism. It's what the criticism means. It means to me, I'm not talented. I'm not good enough, right? And it's confirming my fear. The fear is not of me being criticized, the fear is of me not being enough. And so when someone criticizes me, right, my, my initial reaction is to be like, dang, am I not good enough? Like, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not talented. Maybe this is all a lie. This is all a farce. And I just start spinning out of control. Like, oh my God, like people have been lying to me, right? Like I just, I just go off the deep end. Like that's worst case scenario. And I think for us, we're not necessarily afraid of, you know, the thing, like being seen or whatever, the judgment. It's like what it, the fear that's confirmed in us, right? Like we're, we're not really afraid of things that, it sounds silly. We're not really afraid of things that we're not afraid of, right? I'm not afraid of riding my bike. Riding my bike is fine. But for some people, they're afraid of riding their bike because if they can't ride their bike, what does that mean to them? Well, one, they could fear hurting themselves, obviously. But if they, if they fail riding a bike, maybe they're afraid of, you know, starting something later in life that other people could do. Maybe they're afraid of being seen struggling on their bike. And then seeing them struggle means that they're not, you know, that they're, they don't learn fast, right? That they don't, um, I'm signing, but it's like, they don't um, 
receive instruction very well. You know what I'm saying? Like these kind of things. It's really deeper than I think a lot of us think our fear goes. So I hope that makes sense. Afraid of success is a big one for me. Me too. <laughs> me too. Um, even as this channel grows, my anxiety, I have, I've been having to deal with my anxiety around being seen, right? So like now that people are coming, it's like more people see me. You know what I'm saying? Like, which, which is what I wanted, right? I wanted to grow, obviously. But then when it did happen, I'm like, oh God, now there's this expectation, right? People have an expectation of me and I'm afraid of not meeting their expectation. I'm afraid of, you know, um, hurting someone. I'm afraid of failing or my point not coming across. You know what I'm saying? So like with more eyes comes more anxiety and more fear. It's just an interesting, it's an interesting uh, thing that's happening and interesting, interesting things are coming up. And I've been really having to deal with those fears of like, okay, what is, what is the problem, Alicia? What's going on? Why? You wanted this thing, now it happened. What's the issue? <laughs> like, what's the problem? And, you know, for some of those fears, it came true. I did get a lot of trolls. Again, we talked about this on the, on the live video. We talked about this on the Why Create for Black Women. Um, men, men calling me saying that I look like a man and, you know, people just being really mean and ruthless. Like, in my, in my tab on YouTube, they have a section for withheld comments or comments that are like, that need my approval, right? And so um, usually they include some sort of like, offensive words or whatever. And I just like go in there and delete them. But I made the mistake of like reading through a few of them. And I'm like, whoa, like when I'm telling you there was like violent language in some of them. Also in another video, some man was telling me that I, that he was going to send me clothes to wear to be cuter. It was weird. It, it's just been very strange. Um, but you know, some of those fears did, um, you know, did happen, did, did come true. But you know, I'm here, I'm alive and we here. And so the people that really care, the people that really, and I want to say matter, but I don't mean that these people don't matter, obviously, but the people who matter here, they're here and they're supportive and they're kind and they're loving and they're gentle and they're generous and they're supportive. And so what I've realized is that the fear um, has been kind of quelled because yeah, <laughs> baby don't like that. Yeah, it's weird. But the fear has been um, quelled because what has also been true is that people have been very supportive and understanding and um, people who have, people have resonated with what I've said. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, they do. They do. It's weird. It's like, like, why are you obsessed with us? Like, just, just go. Leave us. Leave us be. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm glad that you made a live. I'm glad. Um, Dr. Ranger says, you're strumming my pain. That is my whole success fear. Yeah. If I succeed, more will, more will be demanded of me. That part. And maybe I can't meet those challenges. That. That. And that is me. That is me. Like, I love what I do. I love making music. I love making videos. I love talking about stuff that really, you know, that, that, that energizes me and gets me going. And I, and I speak really passionately, but it's like, but at the same time it is, it is, it's a lot because it's like, dang, like, you know, these people, it, it's a good thing. It's a, I guess it's a good problem to have, but it's also like, I don't want to let these people down. Now there's more skin in the game, right? Now there's more at stake here. You know what I'm saying? And then now I'm watching my words and making sure that like what I'm saying is really what I mean and that it's coming across correctly and in love um, because people receive information different ways too. So like you have all these different personalities, um, which, you know, is, is beautiful, but that can be overwhelming sometimes too. And um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm glad that you, you understand me, you understand me. And the thing is like, that's why I feel like a lot of us, a lot of us want to be successful or what our definition of success is when we really should embrace the season that we're in, the beginning stages, and the beginning sucks. I get it. <laughs> the beginning sucks. Like, I'm gonna use YouTube as an example because that's what we're talking about, but it can be anything, like learning a new skill, um, learning, you know, learning people, learning languages, like learning YouTube, like posting stuff in the beginning when it seems like no one's paying you any attention, you feel like you don't matter, you feel like, dang, like, well, what am I doing wrong? And then, you know, but at the same time, in the beginning, I have more room to play and to practice. No one is expecting me to be excellent or good, you know, in the beginning. It's like, I can mess up as much as I want to. Don't nobody, anybody gonna see it. My friends will see it. My husband will see it. Maybe my mom. But other than that, no one really cares. And it's a beautiful thing that no one cares because I'm not held to this uh, expectation. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna fall flat because my people are supportive, period. Even if I never made a YouTube video, they would still be supportive. So I feel like, there is, there is a want to be successful, obviously. And I think that we all should be successful. Yes. But we shouldn't wait until we are successful to try to like, 
oh, now I'm worthy. Now I'm, no, like there's freedom in the beginning. And I guess like the more you grow, you can make that choice to be free. And I choose to be free. Like when I don't feel like posting, I'm not posting. Okay, like I'm not gonna post just because I feel like I have to please an algorithm or do these things because I wanna make sure that I'm keeping um, my mental health first. I'm keeping um, my self-love first and I'm keeping my uh, in real life relationships first too. I hope that makes sense, but yeah, yeah. Calligraphy Art says, I'm so sorry, that's horrible, especially since you're sharing so much light. I appreciate that. But you know, like that video I said, I feel like when you when you are a light, you're gonna attract everything. You're gonna attract trolls, you're gonna attract nice people. Um, and so I have to not think that I'm doing something wrong to like put this out there. Some people just don't, some people just are offended by people people's light. They just are offended, you know what I mean? For existing, so yeah. I'm Calligraphy Arts, they're trying to silence you and I'm so glad that ain't happening. I appreciate that, thank you for that. Um, thank you for sharing your vulnerability. You're, you're powerful. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all making space for my, for my vulnerability. That means a lot. Cafe Hearts. I like that name. Um, I, think when we just, when, I think when we just be our authentic selves, which is hard to do because you know life, we will be okay and I'm working through this myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because all you can do is be yourself. I mean, you could choose to be somebody else, but it's not going to work. <laughs> um, I love your channel. It's really helpful and peaceful. Yay. That makes me happy. Thank you. LB says, yes, the, the being seen part in the next meeting, people's expectations. Yes. The thing is I um, dramatized the expectations part in my head. More than likely people are not thinking about it with much thought. You know, I agree with you because when I had that fear of, dang, what if I don't meet people's expectations? When I think of like other people I follow, I'm not, the thing is I'm not putting these people on a high pedestal anyway. I appreciate them and I, and I love them and I support them, but like I give them room to be human. You know what I'm saying? So I would hope that people would have that same grace with me. That's that's the best that I can do. But yeah, there are some people who are like, they're just never gonna be satisfied, you know? Um, yes, expectation, expectations are mind boggling at times. Yes, we just have to let go and be free. Absolutely, absolutely. Barbara, well, I told my brother I was going to buy an e-bike carrier with a ramp. He's He cites my age as a deterrent. Why? Oh, I'm supposed to stick. Oh, I'm supposed to stay home? No way. Just wait until I refurb a six by eight enclosed trailer. Yes, do the thing. I'm excited. I want to see pictures. That's awesome. I'm, I'm so happy I'm finally, I'm so happy you're here, Glam. Glam for breakfast? That's cute. I like that. I'm so happy I finally caught a live. Your content has been such a godsend for me in a time of major darkness. Aw, when I felt so voiceless. I'm so grateful for you, sis. Oh, thank you. And I'm grateful for you. And I'm sending all the love, all the support. Um, Yeah, all the light your way. I feel you, I do. Hi, welcome. Sending love and hugs. Yay, love and hugs to you as well and to everyone. And when I tell you that your channel has been a godsend, it's crazy, that's awesome. I'm grateful. I'm grateful y'all. Like when y'all when y'all say stuff like this, I'd be like, oh, thank you. I'm so, I'm thank you for sharing that with me, right? Like, and again, like I'm just, I'm just showing up. I'm just showing up and trying, you know? I'm just showing up and trying and sharing what I'm working through in real time or things that I have worked through. I mean, I'm just glad that me working through the stuff in real time is helpful to other people too, and not just a mess. That's really helpful. Oh, wow, thank you. I um, love your content and your version of Lovely Day. Thank you, and your cover of Bob Marley, Is This Love? Do you perform live at family events? Um, I haven't, I can though. Um, and I know COVID, it makes stuff tricky, but yeah, yes, I'm open. <laughs> I'm, I'm all about just saying yes <laughs> to everything um, lately, as, as long as it's within, you know, safety and that kind of thing. Like, yeah, that sounds cool. Um, SP, hi. I literally looked up the word success today and it's interesting. The word derived from the word success um, is an outcome. Hmm, that's cool. I'm gonna look that up right now. Um, I appreciate it, yay. Um, what What is your other channel's name? It is The Adventures of Fox and Miles. Um, that is me and my husband's RV channel. We're gonna be RVing again this summer, so I'm excited. So yeah, so if you wanna join us over there, feel free. And you can watch like all the old stuff that we've shared too. We have videos up there already. Um, I'm so proud of you. Glad your channel is growing. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I'm um, sharing your passions. Yes. Um, thank you for sharing your journey. Thank you for listening. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm going to finish these notes and then we're going to make some music. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, yes, like I said, the Beatles, prolific, just making albums, songs, and they're off key and they're just having fun and they're great, right? And so for me, I just made a decision. I'm tired of fear having me in a chokehold. I am so tired. I'm tired of being, the thing is, oh, I'm okay with being afraid. I'm just tired of letting fear stop me from doing the things I wanna do. There are so many things I wanna make, I wanna create. There's so many projects I wanna start. There's so many places I wanna go. 
things, people I want to see, like things I want to try that I don't because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of what the outcome is going to be. I'm afraid of being broke. I'm afraid of failing. I'm afraid of, um, and so, and the thing is, I'm afraid of like all these things. But the thing is, a lot of the fears that I've had have been realized. Okay, I have hit rock bottom. I have been broke. My car has been repossessed. <laughs> like, you know, my mother has been critical of me and what I do. Like, all the things have happened, and I'm and I'm still here. And I and I, and I think it's a, a blessing. I say that even though it sucked, right? It sucked in the moment, absolutely. Um, but I think the blessing in that, and not that I'm trying to find a, a positive thing, but I, but seriously, on this side, I think the the benefit is that I've lost everything already. I've already been almost evicted. I've lost everything already, right? Like I literally have had so many bottom moments that I'm just like, I'm sure, and I'm sure I could get way more bottom -er. I know that's not a real word, but I'm sure I could get way worse, right? But I'm grateful for those moments because I know what the worst can happen and I've been there and it's not the worst thing in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I can rebuild. Like what's the worst that can happen? And I, I really say this to myself, like, okay, if I do this, what's the worst that can happen? Ain't nobody gonna watch it. If I post a video, what's the worst? No one's gonna see it. Or somebody's gonna leave a troll comment. Okay, these people don't know me, you know? Or um, family have been offended by what I've shared before. What's the worst that could happen? Somebody get upset that I share something, right? Like these things have happened and, I, and I'm grateful that they have happened because now when I am afraid of that, I have real things to hold on to, not just what ifs, but like real life situations that I've worked through. I'm like, okay, girl, we can do this. We've, we've done this before. You can do it again, you know? And I feel like that is the exercise of courage, if that makes sense. So yeah. Okay. Let me breathe. Okay. So yeah. So again, my phrase for the year is be prolific, not perfect, not good, not amazing, just prolific. Just keep showing up, keep doing the thing. Like keep making videos, keep making songs, keep creating, keep showing up, just showing up and doing my part. And that's all that I can do. That's all I can do is to keep showing up and keep trying. Um, like I said, on Friday, I made a loop and I hated it. I was like, this sucks. <laughs> this song sucks, you know? But in order to get to the good stuff, I know that I have to work through the bad stuff. I have to. Like there's a lot of us want to start things and be good at it right away. We want to be successful right away. And sometimes that just does not happen. Sometimes we have to work through the bad stuff to get to the good stuff. I have made horrible songs, <laughs> songs I'm embarrassed to share, right? But they've also gotten me to the songs that I'm so proud of sharing. And I have a new song coming out um, this month I'm excited about, um, but it took me time to get there. And things take time. Things take time. You know, it sucks, but it takes time. And so the benefit of me being prolific and not perfect is that I'm able to be more present, I'm able to enjoy the process. I'm not really stuck on the outcome that I can't control anyway. Again, I can write the paper, the, the teacher could still be like, this sucks, it's a D, <laughs> you know? Like I can, I can do my best, I can try out. I tried out for The Voice. I tried out for The Voice before and I got rejected, you know? Like, and I'm like, okay. But I still celebrated the fact that I tried out in the first place, right? Like, so all these things that we're trying to put power in other people's hands, when the power is always with us, even though I didn't get selected for The Voice, I consider that a success because I did it. I tried. And when I tell y'all, before I before I tried out for The Voice, I actually choked on my tea. <laughs> and you know, like when you choke and like your voice gets like real phlegmy and like, uh, like you know, like your throat tries to coat itself from like the injury. Yeah, I was like, this is not going to, this is not going to go well. This is not going to go well. And I thought about canceling, but I said, you know what? Let me just show up anyway. And I didn't get it. But I showed up anyway, and I'm proud of myself because I tried, I tried, <laughs> I tried. I gave it my best shot and it wasn't good enough or it wasn't, it wasn't what they were looking for. But that doesn't mean I'm not gonna start, I'm not gonna stop, that doesn't mean that I'm gonna stop singing. It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna write music, that I'm not gonna make my own way. Like, okay, the gatekeeper said, nah, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna keep making stuff because I believe in me, because I like the music I make, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, and I, and I would also recommend you all be okay with being an amateur, be okay with being average, not mediocre, but average. Be okay with, you know, figuring things out, being bad at first. Like I, I wanna draw so bad, but I, I have not learned how to draw because I'm not good at drawing. <laughs> and a lot of us don't do stuff because we're afraid of being bad at it. You will be bad at it at first, I promise. Like just get that through your head and the, the sooner we accept it, the faster we can get on to doing the things. You know what I'm saying? But you only get better at doing it by being bad at first, by sucking at first, you know? So, all right, so the definition of prolific, 
Okay, usually when talking about plant, plants, it says producing much fruit or foliage, foliage, I can never say that word, of many offspring. But the definition I'm looking at is present in large numbers or quantities, plentiful. So all I'm worried about this year is creating a lot of things, a lot of photos, a lot of music, a lot of videos, a lot of workshops, a lot of podcasts. Like I wanna be creating, I want to create. And so I am a creator, I'm a maker. I need to get in the process and the practice of making, even when it's bad, even when I don't like it. And sometimes that means sharing stuff that I'm not the most proud of, you know, sharing stuff that I'm just like, oh, it's okay, but we're gonna press send anyway, right? Trying things just because I need to get in the practice of trying things and I need to build my courage. So yeah. So again, the benefits of being a, an amateur, having more fun, creating more works of art. Like when I think of perfectionists, when I think of perfectionists, these are people who only create one song a year, right? Versus the artist who was like, every month they got a new single. Like y'all gonna hear these songs, okay? <laughs> y'all gonna get these songs. I don't care if you don't like it, they're gonna get out there. And those people win. Those people win because they're not allowing perfectionism to stop them from sharing. They're not letting their pride, their ego, their fear of being judged or criticized stop them from making stuff. They're not waiting until they feel it's good enough to do the thing, right? Because the thing is, it'll never be good enough. It will never be good enough. And artists, I think, I saw this quote and it was like, art is finished when an, when an artist decides like, okay, that's it, right? Like there's no moment where an artist feels like this is perfect, let's go, right? It's, it's really about like, okay, I've done all, all I can do. If I keep doing, I can keep doing stuff, but like, let's just get it out there. And what I've also realized is that a lot of stuff that we're hung up on that we think people noticed and, and people are like judging and criticizing, no one cares. Half the people don't even realize what we're talking about. Like, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not judging us like we judge ourselves so harshly. And so they're like literally, you know, I was talking to one of my artist friends and he, he was talking about a film that he was putting out and we watched this film today and it was excellent. But for him, for some reason, I guess like he didn't know why like he didn't feel like it was good enough to put out there. And I'm like, oh my God, it's amazing. And I'm not a filmmaker, so I don't have all the, all the things. But to the, to the average person, average, it's beautiful. It's awesome. And, and so, many of our, so many of us are in our own way because we think that we have not hit the mark that other people are not even judging us on. I sing all the time and I share songs. That's the that song that I shared last about, um, about I'm tired of being strong. I'm gonna share it again on Thursday, like by itself. Like there are some things I did in there that I didn't like. And I was like, hey, this is not good. And people, people weren't even worried about me singing the song beautifully. They were, they were connecting with the words and the message. I'm hung up on the wrong things. I'm worried about the wrong things. And a lot of us are worried about the wrong things. Okay, so um, yes, yeah, so it gets me in the practice of creating. The focus is on showing up, not being good, and it removes unnecessary pressure. Courage is a muscle that needs to be exercised and you get better. We have to be okay with making messy drafts and sketches. Again, like, like an artist, an illustrator, they just sketch. And then later on, they perfect what they're doing. What if we allowed ourselves, allowed ourselves to sketch? And I got this from Austin Cleon. He has a book called Steal, Steal Like an Artist. And like, it's like a trilogy of books, but it's really good. Okay, so again, <laughs> some tips. Be okay with starting messy as we, as we come to a close. Be okay with starting messy, call it an experiment. I do this all the time. Everything is an experiment, okay? Because I am not held to a particular outcome. I'm trying to see what will happen if I do this. If I try this, what will happen? And then from the outcome, I take information I learn and I apply it and do something else. And it takes the pressure off of me to have to be good, to have to be the expert, right? It just allows me to play. Learn along the way. Again, like I said, I never position myself as an expert or the best because it's not true. <laughs> and I'm always learning and I'm always open to growing and, do, and, and um, becoming better, right? And a lot of things that we're self-conscious about, folks don't even realize it or see it. We are, our, we are our own worst critics. And practice in public. That's why one of the reasons why I make these loops on live, you see me as I'm practicing the thing. One, it's fun. It gets me out of my head. But then it also allows me to collaborate with other people, right? And then it helps me to fail in public. I might sing off key. The song might not be good, right? It's, it's constantly practicing bravery. Like, okay, the song was good. We're on to the next song. <laughs> We're on to the next song. Let's go. Like you're, you're getting in the practice of being prolific and not trying to be perfect. Because if I was waiting to be perfect, I would share nothing. Nothing. I can always find something wrong. The videos I did in the beginning of the year about me being overwhelmed, I had, I had crust in my eye. <laughs> like... I had crust in my eye and I thought about, 
Um, I was like, should I just reshoot it? I was like, forget it. Just put it out there. And people didn't even notice. People didn't even see it. They didn't notice. What they did see and what they did hear was the message of the video. And so that's what's important, the heart behind what you do. And so ultimately, I just want to live a really full life. And I cannot do that with fear in the front seat. I cannot do that. I can't do it. Like, it starts with me being brave. I have things I want to do, people I want to impact, right? Um, moves I want to make, messages I want to share. And I can't do that if I'm, allow if I'm allowing fear to keep me bound and held, right? Like, I, I can't do it. And I want to be fulfilled. Again, like I said, I don't think that dreams die. I think it just, if, if you don't pursue them, it makes you envious. It makes you crotchety. It makes you really critical of other people. There's this quote um, that, I, that I love and it says, um, a, lot of, a lot of people who critique art, just make your own, right? A lot of people make art because they didn't like a song from somebody else and like, oh, this is how I would do it. Then do it, make it, right? And again, I think when you're creating, you also, um, you also empathize with other people better. I am less critical of people because I create. I like, I am less critical of people who are making stuff because I know how hard it is to make and to share. People who have a lot to say usually are not making their own things. People who are very critical literally sometimes are projecting their own things on, on other people and probably saying to themselves, I could do it better. You probably could, but you're not doing it. <laughs> you're not doing it. So stop criticizing the person that is. You know what I'm saying? Like if we were all doing our own business and we were all about the business that we were supposed to be about, there would be so much less, this is not in good English, there'd be less criticism, envy, jealousy, because we would feel enough in what we're doing. So yeah, that's just, that's just my opinion. I don't know if it's fact, but that's just how I feel. Um, yes, and so I, I don't wanna leave any stone in my life unturned. Everything I'm curious about, I wanna try. I wanna try it. And so I literally, like, I literally see how precious life is. And, and I know that it's kind of cliche to say that, but it's true. Life is so fragile. Life is unbelievably short. It's long, but it's also short, right? Like time, time, is, time is not waiting for you. You know what I'm saying? So while I've been gifted the gift of time, I want to take advantage of it. And I want to do well with the time I've been allotted. It does me or nor my creator, nor the people I want to impact any good by me sitting on my gifts because I'm afraid. And so for me, that's the one thing that, that does keep me going. It, it, I have to not make it about myself. It, it can't always be about me because if it is, then I'm just not going to do anything. But when I look at the world and I look at what I can be doing, it's like, get off your butt and do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, just do it. Especially if I have the means to do it. Um, but yes, I'm literally in my own way. So, and I think one question we should ask ourselves instead of what if it doesn't work out is what if it does? What if it does work out? What is the best case scenario? What if it does work out? And even if it doesn't work out the way that we want it to work out, what if it works out how it's supposed to work out? What if it works out how it's supposed to work out? A lot of things did not work out the way that I thought that they would work out, right? But they worked out how they were supposed to. And I'm grateful that they worked out the way that they were supposed to. I'm grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, Again, the music stuff, right? I thought last year I was like, I'm gonna get on my independent artist thing and I'm finna like, <laughs> you know, make some money. And the money that I made didn't even come from any of the music that I like put out there myself. It was from me working with other companies. And so I, I just feel like there are so many things on the other side of us being brave and on the other side of us trying that we have yet to like touch and to try, but we're so afraid that it's gonna fail, that we're never gonna get to that place. And it's like, there's so much beauty on the other side of your fear. I promise, even if it is just you being more, you know, uh, more uh, confident in yourself. Wouldn't that be enough? Like, wouldn't that be enough to be like, you know what, I did that thing. I did that thing. You Like, I feel so good about myself when I do something that's scary. When I prove to myself that, I, that, that, I'm, that it's possible for me to do. And so no, I might not get the accolades, I might not get the Grammy, I might not, get, I might not ever get any of these things, but me creating and me feeling good, that's enough reason for me to do it. And I think that we all just have to find the good enough reason for us to do the thing. And once we find it and hold on to it and like marinate on that thing, meditate on that thing, I think then, then we'll be able to become, to take that first step. And sometimes the first step is scary, but the more steps you take, the more brave you become. That's just how I feel. So that's all I have. <laughs> um, and so we'll, we'll make a couple of songs. I know it's eight o'clock, so I want to respect your time. But I just had to say that because I kept seeing comments, people saying, you know, I wish I was brave like you. I'm scared. 
I am scared. Half the time I do anything, I share anything, I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm a fearful person, but I just don't want that fear to stop me from living. And I make room for it and I say, you know what, thank you. Thank you for trying to keep me safe. But no, we're still gonna do this thing, you know? So yeah, Barbara says, Thank, thank thanks Alicia and Jamal. I get no validation from fam. I'm sorry, but you all are family to me. Yay, you're family to us too, Barbara. Thank you. You don't know how much you're appreciated. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Um, Powerful Majesty says, I'm the mama who plays your music for my little girls. Oh, first of all, that's beautiful. Yay, thank you. We love your singing so much. Cooking pancakes and singing along to your voice in the morning. That is like, that image, like when he said earlier, yo, that image made me really, really happy. That makes me really happy. Like that image is just like, oh, the joy and pancakes and kids. That's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you. Donna Johnson says, um, I have a cousin named Donna Johnson. I love your story and your fearlessness. You are setting so many people free. That makes me happy. Let's get free together. Let's do it. You know what? That's a great way of looking at it. Yep, you can rebuild. Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> hit rock bottom and we here. <laughs> we still here. Um, Karen Davis says, enjoying your channel and the self-empowering message you, sh you share. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Um, Eliza Nathaniel says, "How have you heard the motivational speech? Keep showing up. It's amazing. No, but I will look it up. I will look it up tonight. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, LB says, I hate feeling vulnerable. What are some ways to get around this? Ooh, okay. Um, some ways to get around being vulnerable or hate get around hating being vulnerable. Um, I would ask why you hate being vulnerable. Like what, what exactly is it? Is it because like you feel like you're, I mean, vulnerability, one, it, it takes bravery to be vulnerable because yes, like people can be very mean and hurtful. Um, but I think you have to be vulnerable around the right people. I don't, I don't, I think that you should find safe people to be vulnerable around first. Don't just be, especially if you're not used to being vulnerable, I would say like to get in the practice of vulnerability, find a safe space to be vulnerable in. I um, mean, that could be friends or family. Um, that could be like a support group. Um, a lot of people like, you know, support groups because it's, it's kind of, um, or even counseling. I mean, I don't know if you, I know counseling can be really expensive, but um, I think that sometimes the people who aren't connected to us, it's easier to be vulnerable with them because um, the people that we personally know, we're worried about how they think about us, how, you know, how they feel about us and our vulnerability. Um, but with people who are not really connected with us, it feels kind of uh, like there's, there's not that much at risk or at stake. You know what I'm saying? Um, so yeah, I would, I would ask that follow-up question. But please, please ask a follow-up question so I can um, clarify. Um, you're a black therapist. Oh, I like your name. Yes, consistency is key. The process is more important than the outcome. Absolutely, absolutely. The process can suck sometimes though, but yes, absolutely. Um, powerful majesty, I love the positivity, positivity, excuse me, and the genuineness of your videos. Thank you. Watching you take chances and be courageous inspire, inspires me to do it too. I like your video on fear of aging and aging posit positivity. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, Samantha Madison says, same, fear sucks. Ralph Smart stated, fear is false evidence appearing real. Ooh, yeah, I think I've seen that um, acronym before. I really need to move in my purpose, but fear can be debilitating. Excuse me, one second. But yes, fear can be debilitating. I agree with you 100%. Um, yes, and, and, and even to that phrase, sometimes I see that, but I'm like, but sometimes your fears are real, like, right? Like it, it's evidence appearing real, but sometimes it's not false. Sometimes, sometimes it is true. Sometimes the fear is my parents aren't gonna like this. And sometimes they don't like it, right? Sometimes the fear is, I don't know, the risk, the risk, right? The risk involved. Like the fear is like, oh, if I put this money in this thing, it might not return. That is, that is a real thing. That's not, that's not false. That's, that's, a, that's a real thing to consider. But I do think it is important to separate like real risk from like, things that we make up in our heads. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think it's important for us to be realistic about the risk and the fear and also be um, realistic about like, okay, am I just making this up? Am I just doing too much? You know what I'm saying? Or um, is this realistic? So I hope that, again, I hope that makes sense. Yay, green hearts to you too, baby. Dr. Ranger, um, there's no way around this. Vulnerability is never comfortable. It's not, it's not, but it's always necessary. When Vulnerability for me feels comfortable with people who are safe. So with my friends, I, with my husband, with, I feel safe. I'm, I'm able to be vulnerable. I don't have to think about um, how I say things. I don't have to think about, you know, what they're going to say about me, like, because they're, they're a safe place and they've proven to be a safe place. Now, I've been vulnerable with people who are not safe places. It is not fun. It is painful. It is not comfortable. Um, and even in those places where it is uncomfortable, I still remain vulnerable because, like, you're not going to, I'm not going to give you power to um, quiet myself 
if that makes sense, or, or dumb myself down. I don't want to say dumb, but like mute myself. Like, no, this is how I feel. When you did X, Y, and Z, this is how it felt. That's vulnerability. You know what I'm saying? Like, as opposed to being like, whatever, girl, you can't hurt me. No, like that's, that's easy to do. It's hard to be like, hey, you hurt me. And I'm like, I'm open hand. I have, you know, I have nothing for you and they can cut you. Like that's possible and that's happened to me. But I just want to make sure that you're doing this in safe places because if you're wounded, then it's, then it becomes really hard to be vulnerable again. You know? Um, I don't like it any more than you do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, there's, okay, yes. Um, Powerful Majesty says, I also love the scripture that you shared to connect life's challenges with ancient wisdom in the Bible. Yeah, listen, the Bible is full of, uh, full of helpful, helpful advice and wisdom and all the stuff, okay? Zen quote, in the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are a few. I love it. I need to screenshot that because yes, when you're a beginner, like you're open to anything. When you, just, just think of like children. When, they're, when, when you ask a kid, what do they want to be? They list infinite amounts of possibilities or things that they know of anyway, things that they've seen. Like a firefighter, a policeman, a doctor, da, da, da. And then the older we get, the less we feel like it's possible for us. And I feel that's not true. We can start over today. We can be whatever we want to be. And I, I think we can be whatever we want to be. I, I know people say like, you can't do anything you want to do. I, I think we can. I think with the right tools, the right help, we can, you know, doing it well. Good to see you too. Good to see you too. This video is just right on time, especially as a creative. Yes, I feel you as a creative. Absolutely. Um, I'm working on it. I'm not sure what happened, but I was never like this. Mm. The younger me didn't care. Now I care kind of. Yeah, I, again, I think as a child, like as children, we are, we are more open, we're more, we're more vulnerable. And so the older we get, the more experiences we have, the more experiences we acquire and the less vulnerable we tend to be. You know, so I think, I think that's a natural thing. Samantha says, thank you for sharing. The more you share, the more it helps movement. My mom said, if you hang around the barbershop long enough, you will get your hair cut. <laughs> that's, that's a good phrase. I like that. I like that. Um, greetings, everyone. Hi, this is my first time catching you live. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Um, I love that song. The words are my life. Oh, yeah, I'm glad that you enjoy the song. And thank you, LB. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I meant to ask, which of your songs was made into a commercial? Oh, thank you. Congratulations. So happy for you sharing your magic with all of us. Thank you. It was actually a cover of Mr. Postman that I did in like 2016, 17. Um, and they, they found it last year and was like, hey, we want to use it in a commercial. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was the song. And, and I'll share it again on the community tab. I'm with you guys. And I love the song, Lily Made Me Cry. Oh, yay. I mean, yay that it resonated with you. I hope it was happy tears that you, that you just felt heard and seen. Dr. Ranger, um, you just don't have any control over it, so you don't have to let it control you. Yes. Um, I absolutely love Austin Cleon books. Yes, they're great. They're great. Thank you. Um, and that y'all having, I'm trying to see like where the conversation between y'all, because I, I, I love the conversation that y'all are having with each other. Um, okay. The work itself is the win. Think of all the people who aren't even bothering to try. You're ahead of the game. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I don't even like, I, I agree with that, but I also don't like, saying I'm ahead, I wanna be ahead of anybody. Like, I feel like, you know, we're, we're always set up to compete with other people. And I know that's not what you mean, obviously, but I think that we're so, our language is so that we're always in competition with other people. I don't wanna be in competition with anybody. Like, I just want all of us to thrive. I, I think that there is enough space, enough room for all of us to make it that if, it is heartbreaking to me when people don't pursue their dreams or chase their dreams. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not a joy like, oh, I'm getting ahead of this person. It's like, no, like you can come with me. You know what I'm saying? Like you can pursue your thing too. Even if it is the same thing that you're doing, even if we're doing the same thing, we need more. We need more of that, you know? So yeah. Um, I love words and their orange origins. The origin of the word prolific. Ooh, educate us. Prolific. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that wrong. Offspring to nourish. Um, facere to make do. You're prolific, girl. You're doing the damn thing. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for teaching us that. That's awesome. Um, I made a song to help me with my anxiety. Then God took it away. Now I have to work on the perfectionist part. Oh, he took away the anxiety. Okay, not the song. Please, I would love to hear it. I would love to hear the song. But yes, same. I'm working through perfectionism every single day or fear every single day. Um, yes, what if it does work out? Absolutely. Um, your courage, your gifts, your sharing inspire, share, inspire so many. I'm grateful. That makes me happy. That really makes me happy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I love the mom comment. I know, it was cute. Awesome as usual. Wing Will 500. So when are the rant videos coming? That's funny. More rants are coming soon. Don't worry. We're going to rant some more. Um, yeah, because I used to, for those who were here before, like, you know, 
for those people who are here, we used to have like talks and then music. And so I think I'm gonna get back into that, like having talks. Um, but I just, before I didn't really have anything to say. Like I just kinda, I just I was just like processing things. I was really tired. So yeah, but more of that's coming. <laughs> um, how do you move forward from your loved ones not supporting you and the thing that were important to you? How did you not hold on to a grudge? I hope I made sense. You make, you make, you make perfect sense. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> I struggled. I struggled a lot with this. Um, I would love to say that I was, girl, whatever, I'm doing me. That was not how it was at all. I cried. I sobbed. I questioned what I was doing. Um, I had I had moments where my mother wasn't supportive of me. My brother wasn't supportive of me. Um, and, and it really made me question, like, the validity of what I wanted to do. Like, is this, is this real? Like, is this, is this some dream that I have that will never come true. Should I just get a real job? Should I, you know, give up on my dream and do the adult thing? And a lot of people think like the adult thing is like forsaking their dreams and, you know, doing what you have to do to pay the bills. And for some people, I understand, right? Like I get it because you got to do what you got to do. You got to pay the bills. Um, but for me, it took me being honest about how I felt. I think, I think the reason why the re I think the reason why I don't have a lot of bitterness is because I, I express what I feel. Like I express what I feel to the people <laughs> and they don't always accept it well and they don't always reciprocate that kindness. Um, but I know for me, I have to do the work so that I'm not holding on to this bitterness. You know what I'm saying? And so again, showing up and doing what you can, not worrying about how other people are gonna respond. While it would have been beautiful for my family to have been like, oh my God, you're so talented and I, and I, so, and I so support you and, and you know, this is amazing. And, and I don't, even, okay, let me, let me be careful with what I'm saying. My family was not altogether unsupportive. However, um, they would tell me like, they would tell me that they believe in me, but then in the same, with the same tongue say that maybe I shouldn't pursue this right now, which really meant that like, you don't really believe in me. And um, when, I, when I expressed those things, it wasn't received well. I'm just being honest. It was not received well. They didn't understand. But I think I just made a commitment to myself because I had spent so much time doing what other people wanted me to do and it made me so unhappy. I thought I'm gonna cry. It made me so unhappy, it made me so sick, so depressed, so unfulfilled, so bitter. Um, it, it put me, it, it lowered my self-esteem and my self-confidence in myself. And so I was putting myself in situations because I didn't feel like I was good enough. It was, it was, a, it was spilling over in everything. And I said, enough is enough. And luckily for me, I had, I had a wonderful support system. I have beautiful friends. I have a wonderful husband. I have people who are in my corner that even though they weren't my family, like, you know, by blood, they are my family. You feel me? Like they are my family. And so they were very supportive of me. They came to all my shows. They supported me when I'm sharing my music. They believe in what I'm doing. Like they're trying to give me, they're trying to give me um, ideas to help me market and to plan and to, you know, to do the thing. And so I had those reassuring people in my corner, even when the, my family was so loud and they're in their, in, their uh, in the way that they were not supportive in the way that I needed them to be supportive. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, it's taken time. <laughs> like it's taken time to not, to not be bitter and to move forward. And for some of my family, just being honest, it wasn't until I started seeing some success that they actually turned around, that they actually started uh, you know, changing, changing their tune. And I don't hold that against them. I don't, because at the end of the day, I think they wanted good for me. I think they just wanted me to be well-kept. They didn't want me to be homeless. <laughs> they didn't want me to be struggling out here. Um, and also some of that was projection from themselves. Some of that, again, had nothing to do with me. And so I had to look at them with that kindness, like to say, you're not supportive of me, but it really has nothing to do with me. It's about you. It's about you and your, and your inability to see the greatness within you. And so you're projecting that onto me. And I have to reject that. I have to say, yo, no, like I'm, mm -mm, nah, we're, we're cutting that off right here, right? And I believe that you can do your thing too. So when, so when I wasn't supported, I was supportive of them, right? Like when I wasn't supported, I would still talk loudly about what I'm doing. I would still be like, yo, this is what I'm making. And even they'll be like, okay, that's cute. You know, <laughs> like I would still be uh, persistent in what I'm trying to do. So, I mean, I, ho I hope that answers your question. That's just, that just worked for me. I know that everybody is not the same and you know, it's not like a one size fits all, but that's just what worked for me. Um, I'm not really good at holding grudges in the first place. I think if anything, it's like, I don't know, it, it's just pain. It's like, it's not really a grudge. It's like, why don't they love me? Why don't they support me? It's not like, I hate you, it's, you know, can't stand you because you did X, Y, and Z. It's really like, it hurts. You know what I'm saying? And so 
some sometimes the hurt just needs it just needs time. There's no way to work around it. You got to work through that thing. You got to work through that thing. And when I tell you, listen, my husband knows, okay? Many nights crying, many nights questioning, doubting, and you know, never feeling good enough. You know what I'm saying? But I had to make that I had when they couldn't be supported, supportive, I had to support myself. You know, and it sucks. It sucks to stand alone, but it's true. So I hope that I hope that answers your question. If it didn't, you can let me know. <laughs> Um, yes. Okay. Hi, Cadillac Dixon or Cadillac D Dixon. The draw, the draw. Okay. Yes. I'm at work to stop to say, Hey, and we'll definitely catch up um, when I get home. Okay. Yay. Be safe. Get home safely. Yay. And yeah, shout out to chosen family. Ew, ew, ew. I love y'all. Um, LB says, wow, this live is so good. It's truly helping me. I'm glad. Thanks for sharing your experiences about family. I don't share anymore. Okay. Listen, I should have said that sometimes you don't need to share everything with your family. <laughs> I know some people might not like that. You do not need to share everything with your family. You do not. Like there are some things I do not share because I know how they're going to react. And I know how, I know how sensitive I am. And to save myself from all the pain and the heartache, I'd be like, girl, I'm not even going, no, we're not even going to go there. I'm not going to say it. And I'm going to wait until whatever happens is supposed to happen and be like, oh, I did this thing, you know? And so some of them will be like, well, why didn't you tell me? And I never say like why I didn't tell them, but it's about my, my self-preservation. I don't share everything. I share it with the people that I feel safe with. Um, LB says, right, it's about them. Yep, had to reject that too. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, Glam for Breakfast says, I really appreciate you sharing because I'm really going through right now and it's been really hard and lonely without the support of people that I love the most. Your words make perfect sense. Okay, I'm glad it makes sense. Okay, I'm glad. And I'm really sorry that you're going through and I get it. <laughs> I really do get it. I really do get it. But yeah, I, I would say find some supportive people, support yourself, like hold fast to that thing, write that thing down, like see it every day, say it to yourself every single day. How, however many times you need to do that, find a safe place. And hold on to that thing. And yeah, don't share stuff with people who are not safe places. Those, those are my tips. Those are my tips. Okay. No many trust few. I mean, hey, <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. You have to do what you have to do. And in, even in that, I, trusting myself, right? Like, I don't trust myself to hear everybody's opinion, to hear everybody's um, uh, ideas of what they should want for me. Because I know how I am. I'm a people pleaser. And I'm trying to heal from that. But if I'm taking in everything, I'm going to be a mess. <laughs> so I can't ask everybody for their opinions. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, absolutely. Okay. Let's get to some music making. We're going to make, we're, I'll make one song because it's 817 or make a couple. We'll see. And we'll practice in public and see how it goes. So give me one second while I switch over the sound. And let's see how you do this. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it would help if I turned up my thing. <laughs> There we go. But yes, I, I really do. I know there's a question at the bottom. <laughs> what would you do if you weren't afraid? And so it's kind of a trick question because we're always afraid. We're always going to be afraid of something. Hi, welcome. Welcome. Um, we are always going to be afraid of something. But my hope is that you try in spite of your fear, that you still give yourself a chance, a, a chance to try to succeed, and that you redefine what failure means to you, right? Okay. 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 Can y'all hear, hear me? me? <laughs> okay. I hope y'all can, can hear me. me. Oh, oh, is the sound is the sound, is the sound still, still going? going? Oh Lord. Let me put on my earphones. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, okay, yeah, you can hear me. Okay. 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 All right. All right. Oh. <laughs> Not this reverb. Okay, that should be better. <laughs> All right. Um, so basically what I was saying before the, the mic cut off, that's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> basically what I was saying was that, um, dang, I forgot. I forgot. I think it was about trusting myself, like learning to trust myself. So um, I recently resigned from my job, but then cowardly changed my mind at the last minute. While working for someone else financially makes sense, I really want to be an entrepreneur. A part of me died. No, I'm so sorry to hear that. But what I will say is you, you can, 
Okay. Usually I'm like, leave the job. I'm going to just be honest. That's, that's what I'm going to say. But also, like, if you don't feel comfortable with leaving right now, you can still start your thing in a small way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to leave the job completely. Um, you can also, you know, try to figure something out where you can, like, do something on the side and then slowly build that out. You know what I'm saying? And then you could take that leap. Some people need that, need that safety net, and that's totally fine, you know? Um, but don't think that you're a failure because you didn't resign when you think that you should have. You might need more time, and that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, like I, I hope that a part of you didn't die. I hope that you give yourself another chance because yeah, some people need time and it's okay if you need time to eventually leave, you know, take your time and do it with kindness and with love. You don't have to do everything like jumping out the window. Like it could be, I'm going to take the steps, <laughs> you know, as long as you get there, as long as you're making movements, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. All right. So for the song, if we can do, oh no, am I frozen? Oh no. If, if you can give me a number between 95 and 130, I'd appreciate that. And then we can make a song. Let's see. Ooh, first Samuel thir 36, I'm gonna look that up in a second. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go, okay. 110. So 110 is the first one. I see you, Joy. Um, if we can do a second one, um, we'll do 121. Okay. Um, Barbara says, excellent advice. Baby steps is needed sometimes. Absolutely. Listen. And it doesn't make you any less than, doesn't make you any less brave. Some people need time. Some people need a plan. <laughs> and that's totally fine. For me, I'd just be like, I can't. <laughs> I'd be like, Lord, just help. Let's see. Okay. All right. So we got 110. Thank you. I'll try to be more patient with myself in the process. Absolutely. You deserve patience. You, de you deserve time and kindness. Absolutely. You did not fail. You did not fail. All right. Let's see. I'm going to need some reverb, as I always do. Okay. And if you could. Ooh. If you all could tell me how you feel right now, tell me how you feel right now, and we'll try to incorporate those words into a song. All right, let's see. We got 888. We'll do eight measures because it's easy. But yeah, I hope that y'all got something from, from this talk. I literally was like, I gotta talk about this. Because I'm not special. I mean, we're all special, obviously, but like, you can, we can all be brave and we can all win. All right, 110. Okay, that is 110. Absolutely, as long as you're making steps. Okay, good. <laughs> Um, I'm fighting bitterness right now, even though I'm in the mi midst of changing my life for the better. Um, since I'm in the process, it's been hard to relate to others who aren't or haven't gone through it. And I get, I get that. I understand that. I do. I do. Ooh, I love these words. Okay. Full. Oh, hold on. Full, hopeful, and inspired. A little heavy, too, though. That's okay. That's all right. I'm praying that you get some joy for your heaviness. Overwhelmed, inspired, and motivated. Oh, I hope I didn't overwhelm you. Encouraged, driven. I'm good. That's good. I like that. With a period, okay? Feeling relaxed. That's lovely. Um, Cam Marie. Yay, I finally made it to a live. Yay, thank you for being here. Um, and thank you. That means a lot to me. Um, oh, speak on it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Battling bitterness. Releasing the voice and having to pick up my pieces and figure out life again. I'm sending y'all so much love because... Yeah. I'm feeling carefree and present. Okay, that's lovely. Okay. 110. All right. And then we're going to do more reverb and then a bass. Okay. okay. 
right, Lord, give us a song, please. Let's do four. <laughs> Full of hope, I'm inspired. We'll do both. <laughs> I know you probably meant food, Marcus, but yeah, we'll do full of hope and I'm inspired. Okay. And we'll go from there. So let's practice in public. Here we go. Full of hope, I'm inspired. 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 Then we have
like that a lot. That was really nice. <laughs> Thank you all for participating. I appreciate you. Um, it is 8.39. I think we might have time for one more song. Let's see. I like that one a lot, actually. That's going to be one. Uh, let me turn off this reverb. Okay. Right, right, right. Okay. So tomorrow is my mother's birthday, and we're going to hang out. And so I'll be able to, um, I'm not going to be able to make a loop. LOL. We just did. Yay. <laughs> So that's awesome. Okay, so let me, what was the next number? It was 121. Okay, 121. We'll make one more song, and then we'll call it a night. So yay. Mm, let's see. Um, all right, one, yes, 121. Okay, let's see. Edit. All right. And for this one, I don't know. Let's see. We might just vibe with this one. So give me one second. And if you could, if you could all, if you all could answer the question, I would love to hear your answers. Like, what do you want to do what you're afraid of doing? And how can you make a commitment to yourself to try to take your first step? I would love, love, love to hear. And I've heard some people saying songs and um, videos, all the things. I would love to hear from everyone that wants to share. You don't have to share if you don't want to, by the way. It's no pressure. Um, let's see. Reverb, because I love reverb. And I need a bass. I need a bass. I need a panning delay. Da, 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 da. And I need reverb. Okay, more reverb. Um, let's see. And this is 121. Okay. Let's see. All right, I think we have all the things. Let's do eight measures again because it's easy and it's even. The only time I don't do eight or four is when I'm usually covering songs. So like A Tribe Called Quest, their, um, why can't I think of the song? A Tribe Called Quest called Elect Elexation Relaxation. Elec electric Relaxation, oh my gosh. Their song I think is like three, three measures, I believe. Yeah, it's three. All right. Who cares? You guys didn't ask that. Okay. All right. So let's see. Oh. Thank you so much, DJ Blue Jazz. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. Okay, and let me see the words that you all have. So, okay, Carefree, we did less, okay. And then we said hearts, thank you, Barbara. Um, clear and lively, ooh, okay. So we might just vibe on this one, but I love to see your words, and I do wanna see what you all are gonna do. So, here we go. Or what you all are afraid of doing that you wanna try. Give us a song, please. Aw, you, you sound like Sweet Honey in the Rock. I love, I love this. Oh, yay. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yes, not everything has to be for profit. That is very true. Okay. See what happens. <laughs> Here we go.
save, save, save. Yay! <laughs> well, thank you all for spending your evening with me. We spent almost two hours, two hours together. So thank you so much for spending time. I hope that you got something from today, from this live. Sorry, all my eye is itching. I think I might have allergies. I don't know. I might have to check that out. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I hope that you were able to take something from this. I also want to see your answers. Um, yes. So, so the question was, what would you do if you weren't afraid? <laughs> and yes, you did catch a lie. Thank you for being here. <laughs> um, it says, oh. For centuries, art like this, let me turn off this reverb. <laughs> okay. For centuries, art like this has been called mantra. You're making brilliant loops. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Calligraphy art says write short stories. Yes, that's lovely. Do it. Jamile says, I start writing again. I love that. And I want you to write again. I do. Claudia says, I love interior design. I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Do it. I love it. I love it. And I would love, even if you didn't write the answers, like, what is the first step, right? Right. Like, what is the first step to get you started with the thing? It could be reading a book. It could be watching a YouTube video. Um, it could be signing up for classes. But, like, make sure that with the intention, you're setting up some steps so that you can actually achieve the thing. You know? Like, steps are important. So, yes. And it could be as small as you want them to be. They don't have to be huge steps. Um, but, yes. Um, yay. Uh, let's see. Um, launching my handmade natural hair and skin line. Finally. Yes. Also finishing my fashion collection and starting writing again. I love that. I love all of it. And please share when you start your, um, your things, your handmade natural hair and skincare line. I might grow my hair out soon. We'll see. We'll see what the Lord says. <laughs> um, DJ Blue, ja Blue Jazz, excuse me, says, tell the truth regardless of fear and consequence consequences. Absolutely. I feel like as long as the truth is told in love, go with it, right? Go with it. Um, Camry says, fashion, styling, and short stories. I love that. A lot of y'all are writers. I love that. Um, Aziza says, make and sell my own creation retro clothing for women. Yes. That's exciting. I can't wait to buy from y'all. Um, Samantha Madison says, um, thank you so much for sharing your beautiful soul. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dinah says, want to be a life cult coach? Do it. Absolutely. Go for it. I love that. Um, all of you all dreams, your dreams are like so encouraging to me. This is beautiful. Joy says, um, to stop playing small and fully invest myself into my own dreams. Absolutely. I love that. I love it. Um, Jamal says, please be, yes, please be sure to hit the like button to continue to show your support for Alicia and all she's doing. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much for liking. I appreciate that. Um, I fear people's fear. Sorry, excuse me. I fear people's fear being in the way of my discernment. Ooh, tell me more. I fear people's fear being in the way of my discernment. I fear people's fear. Tell me more. I would love to hear more. London says, I'm at an interactive live concert. So peaceful. Yay. That makes me happy. Hi, Joy Ruth. Welcome. Um, I'm hearing house music EDM. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Save this loop for me. Absolutely. I will. I will. I'll save it for you. <laughs> yes. Marcus, make the music. Um, <laughs> beat drops. Dance wildly. Absolutely. Um, Simply Red Island Girl says, sending love, prayer, and peace to everyone from Barbado Barbados. Hi. Welcome. Or hi from America to Barbados. <laughs> hey. So glad that you're here. I love your music. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Hi, Jessica. Welcome. I'm late, but I'm here. I'm happy that you're here. No worries. And you're not late. It's all good. Um, yay, hearts. Love and beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. I'm glad y'all enjoyed. Um, I'm going to study physics. Oh, yes. Do it, Andre. Do it. Physics was not my, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> physics kicked my behind, okay? It was not one of my strong uh, subjects, but go for it. I love it. <laughs> Um, don't know, but gonna spend time with myself. Actually, absolutely. I feel like that's the first step, right? F spending time with yourself is the first step. I love that. Um, yes, I would be more than happy to send you some. Please, please do, please do. And I'll purchase it from you. I will. I'm complete my EP. Yes, yes, do it. I can't wait to share. Um, theft store for men's clothing and oh, thrift store for men's clothing and accessories. I love that. I love that. Yes, <laughs> yes, thrift. Um, how do you stop being afraid and keep moving when discouraged and disenchanted? Ooh, I will say you should rewind the video because we talked a lot about fear. Um, because I don't think that fear, like long story short, I don't think that fear um, is something to get rid of or to stop being. I feel like fear is always going to be there, but we have to work through the fear to get towards the thing that we want to do. And the only way to become more brave or braver, more brave. English. Anyway, the only way to become more brave is by doing the thing, is by taking baby steps towards the thing that you want to do. Because bravery is like a muscle and you have to you have to work it out. 
you know, um, and keep moving when discouraged and disenchanted. I would say make room for your feelings. I get discouraged too. You know, I get, I get really discouraged. Um, I get down on myself, but you know, I have to have safe spaces like my friends, um, safe spaces like my husband or safe spaces like myself or a journal or something, prayer, like things like that, just to be honest, like be honest about your feelings. Don't try to push it down. Be honest about how you feel. And then, um, yeah, then take the time that you need to heal and then take the next, next step forward. And again, that's oversimplified, but we talked about this a lot today. Um, so yeah, I would say like rewind if you can. And um, cause people ask that question too. And we talked about that cause I get scared too. I am not fearless. I am not fearless. Um, Claudia says, this is what a lot of black women need. Yes, I'm happy. Okay. Um, Belinda Grimes says, lovely, lovely vibe tonight. I am glad. I'm so happy that you all spent your evening with me. This, I think this is the longest live we've done. Maybe, maybe not. I think when I was making a song, I spent four hours, but tonight, like two hours, I think that's the longest time tonight. So anyway, thank you all. <laughs> thank you for being here. I am hungry. And I'm going to go eat. I hope that you all enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, thank you, love. I'll watch um, the beginning. Okay, yay. Awesome. No worries. No worries at all. <laughs> Please, like, no worries. Um, I'm glad that I'll leave the video up so that you all can watch, watch the replay if you want to. And I hope that you all have a lovely evening. Thank you so much for being here. Um, usually I shout everybody out. There's a lot of names here. <laughs> But everyone that is here, everyone that has shared, that has uh, given, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your input and your support and your love. Carry this with you with, through the week. I hope that you all enjoy your week. Tomorrow's my mom's birthday, so I'm going to be hanging out with her. And I hope that you all find some joy this week and start making steps towards your dream and your goals, okay? Because I believe in y'all. Believe in yourselves. All right. And we'll come back and talk about this. And I'll ask, like, what have we been doing? <laughs> so, so anyway, have a wonderful evening. Love you guys. Good night. Yes. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Yay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll be sure to tell her. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm taking her on a surprise trip tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see how she likes it. All right. Bye, y'all. Have a good night.